Resistance 2. The thing that I loved most about the original Resistance was its immersion, and it's back here. I've played my fair share of shooters, and while Resistance series isn't my favorite, it is by far the most immersive first person shooter series to date. There's just something about Resistance that makes it feel real. It makes you forget that you're playing a video game. And with an alternate dimension set in the 1950s, that is no easy feat. This game takes place in a couple of different countries and throughout the United States. You visit Iceland, California, Idaho, and Chicago, just to name a few. While the color scheme and level design is nothing to write home about, they are still pleasing to the eye and varied enough to not give you the burnout effect that so many games can. Repetitiveness doesn't exist here. It's of course a shooter, but enemy AI is so intelligent and varied that you never know what sort of enemy to expect, making your gun choices that much more important. This adds even more to the immersion. It isn't a mindless shooter. This game is challenging even even on its easy setting and it forces you to think on your toes. You have to scavenge for your guns and ammo. There are no ammo chests in this game. And the varied enemy type will cause you to question your decision to pick up, use, or leave behind a certain gun every time. You will face Chimera in all shapes and sizes. You have the average Chimera that you can kill easily with almost anything. You have the Chameleons that are invisible until they are just a few inches away that require swift shots to kill, best taken down with shotguns. You have massive Goliaths that need taken down with the pulse cannons and larks. And then you have the shield wielding brutes that can be outsmarted with auger guns that allow you to shoot through solid objects. The great thing is that the game never hands guns to you and forces you to use them on any Chimera. Mirror type. It's up to you, the player, to find and hold on to certain guns when you may need them three checkpoints down the line. That being said, I would have enjoyed a larger weapon variety. While all weapons had their own abilities and all delivered different amounts of damage, they are handled almost identically. I didn't really feel any weight to larger weapons, which can be immersion breaking just a little bit, but a feature I did appreciate was being able to knife or do a melee attack with the flick of your controller. This is 100% optional as you can just click R3. My only complaint is that it doesn't feel natural. You have to fling up rather than swipe your controller from one side to the other, which if this had been the case would have been my way of getting combat kills. I would have loved that for the parts of the game where enemies are crawling all over you. This game can be absolutely terrifying at parts. I hated walking through dark houses and tunnels, but hated in a good way, and the way that you hate horror films but love them at the same time. I was on the edge of my seat throughout most of the game, even jumping at the sight of my own shadow. Again, immersion. Resistance 2 is the definition of it. I would recommend this game to anyone if you are a fan of shooters or not. Even though it is now only half of a game, the online servers of this game have shut down making this game's platinum unobtainable. So even though I have played the online, I will not be covering it in this review. But the single player alone is worth your time. For what it is, 9 out of 10. And overall, 9 out of 10. Resistance 2 is a classic. It should be in anybody's backlog. If you played Resistance 2, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, thumbs up if you like the video, and tune in Monday for Mystery Box Monday where you find out what game we're playing next. Thanks for watching. Negative. We're looking at about three feet of solid iron. Understood. Hang tight. We'll access the door from the control room.